Lots of online skills, as we know, MOOCs, the massive online courses, are available. Coursera is one of them. And now we are going to talk with the Chief Content Officer of Coursera, Dr. Betty Van Den Bosch, who is with us. Good morning to you, Betty. Good morning. How are you? Great. Great to have you on. And one of the reasons we're having you on, Betty, today, fascinating this whole space of, of ongoing education, executive education, uh, but also you have a new Women in Skills and Skills Report 2021 yeah. talking about shifting the gender balance, creating opportunities for women. Tell us about this report. What, what was the basis of this Women and Skills Report? So it's something that we ran across when we were doing our regular look at who our learners were. And uh, late last year, we found out that many more women were coming to the platform, particularly to learn about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, than we'd seen previously. Hmm. And, you know, it was just this one piece of data. And we thought, wow, we should look into that. Because for the whole world needs more people who have digital skills. And women up until recently, have been relatively slower to adopt digital skills and learn about them. So we said, okay, let's figure this out. And we did the analysis, and much to my personal happiness, we found that many, many more women are taking courses than had prior to the pandemic. Of course, we've got all kinds of explanations and reasons why we believe that's the case. And we're very excited for uh, for everyone because more women in STEM is good for everybody. Well, Betty, let's dig into some of those reasons. I'm looking at your findings. You said that women surpassed men in the share of learners using mobile learning, 41% to 38%. It, it's not an insubstantial figure. It's quite impressive. So, what are some of the what are some of the platforms that these women are going for? What areas are they going in when they're going for this mobile learning? So um, I, I need to explain mobile learning a little bit. Yeah. Um, Coursera is a platform that you can participate with on your phone. You can also do it at mm. your computer, of course, but on your phone. And what's interesting and important about that, of course, is when you can learn on your phone, you can download a course and you can look at it when you have time rather than when you're tethered to a computer, which I am most of every day. So the beauty of that for women is they have very busy, truncated lives. So somebody can spend 10 minutes working on their coursework while they're waiting for the rice to boil or something like that, while they're waiting for their kids to come home from school. They have these little chunks of time, and mobile learning facilitates that. So that's why we believe more women than men use mobile. Now, what are they learning? All kinds of stuff. The top things that women in Singapore were learning last year in 2021 were probability and statistics, communication, leadership and management, and machine learning and entrepreneurship. All of those, I think, mm. are really strong for women because they're going to be able to make moves for themselves and for their families as a consequence. Wow, this is fascinating. We are talking to Betty Vandenbosch, the Chief Content Officer at Coursera. And Betty, I know from the information that came across to us uh, prior to this interview that you uh, started that position in April of 2020. Boy, were you in for something you didn't realize huh? yeah. when, you, uh, when you got the job in 2020. But this brings us to the bigger question of online learning has, has usurped, surpassed uh, much of the in-class learning just because of, of the pandemic in many uh, countries and for many schools. How are you viewing these online learning uh, uh, opportunities uh, versus before you apparently you had worked with uh, Purdue online, uh, working with Kaplan uh, University. These are, you know, huge blue chip names in the education industry and ones that typically people think of as being in-person uh, learning, mm -hmm. especially in the case of, of, of Purdue. How, how has your mindset changed on the importance of online learning and its relationship to traditional in-class learning? So I started traditionally, because when I started, there was no online learning. 
Yep. But I have been working with online learning since the mid-2000s. So this okay. is not new for me. And what I find with online learning is that it promotes different kinds of learning as well as different ways for people to be. In a traditional classroom, the loudest voices get the most attention. You know, you every, all of us know the person who's always doing, you know, raising their hand and shaking and pick me, pick me. But in an online classroom, it's not the most extroverted or the one who speaks the most loudly and even the most eloquently who gets the attention. Everybody's got an opportunity to think before they write, to really contemplate what it is that they're learning. And we often find that people who are not prominent in a face-to-face -face classroom really shine in the online environment. So that's hmm. one thing. A hard part about online, of course, that everybody talks about is motivation, connection to other people, and so hmm. on and so forth. But what we find at Coursera is when we offer people the opportunity to communicate in small communities with others who are learning the same sorts of things that we do, a lot of that community feeling stays and people are learning from each other as well as from the material in the classroom. It, it's different. It's not for everybody, but it is for a lot of people. Last thing, the skills that you learn just by participating online are the skills that you need for most work today. You know, hmm. if I didn't know how to work online, April 2020 would have been a real problem for me. Sure, sure. <laughs> Betty, you've raised a fascinating question there. Uh, there was a real phenomenon that we saw during COVID. I saw it at a personal level. I'm sure Glenn did as well. Something that you'd highlighted. When I do online workshops or talks, I found myself having to devote more time at the end to Q&A okay than I would mm -hmm. do at a live event because people that were previously a little too sheepish maybe to speak right. up in the flesh were suddenly inundating that chat box on Zoom with question after question after question. However, the flip side to that is those folks at some point as we move into an endemic phase still have to go back into, inverted commas, the real world. Mm -hmm. So how do we balance that? The fact that it has encouraged more people to take more courses and participate mm. virtually, but then to take those skills into the real hmm. physical workplace? Hmm. So you raise an interesting question. I, I would come back to that and say, while it's true that everyone will still engage in the face-to-face -face workplace, there are many more remote jobs than there have ever been. And there are opportunities for people to work in the environment that suits them best. And I, I just want to harken back to women a little bit, but particularly for them, flexible work, work that can be done from anywhere, is work that makes a lot of sense for many women. And that's why developing digital skills, building the, the capability to have a digital on-ramp into the automated world is something that makes a ton of sense. And many people will not go back to face-to-face -face full-time. I know I won't. Coursera is now a remote-first organization. Yeah, fascinating. Even that term remote first, right? That's a yeah. that's a term we didn't have uh, just two years ago. Uh, thanks for thanks for uh, putting we're that. Do, into we're doing the it right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's well, right. Course. That's right. And, and and we here at Money FM, with the exception of very few exceptions, have been uh, totally remote in terms of our guests. Uh, and over and the we've past benefited years. from it enormously, greatly. Yeah. greatly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Betty. Uh, Let's go back to the Singapore stats that you mentioned a moment ago, the top skills among women. Uh, in your report, this uh, report that um, is called the Women and Skills Report 2021 by Coursera, uh, you mentioned that the women were learning probability and stats, communication, leadership and management, machine learning, entrepreneurship. Uh, how, how does Coursera track or are you able to track um, the, the end result of the courses that these yeah. folks have taken. Have they, have, has it actually led to more jobs, new jobs, different jobs uh, for the people, not only women, but men as well, who take your courses? How do you quantify it? So we do surveys mm -hmm. and we do find in our surveys that many, many people improve their lot. They move forward, they move up, they change careers. Um, one thing that I'd like to just share about that 
is a, uh, a specific example of a woman who took one of our entry-level certificates. So mm -hmm. these are certificates that you can take. Uh, they take three to six months, typically. You can go a lot faster if you have nothing else to do. And after that time, you can become uh, capable of taking on an entry-level position in a field that you previously didn't have any understanding or knowledge of. So we have them in things like project management, uh, user interface design, web design, data analysis, IT management, the, the stuff that, that is very uh, related to the digital world. We have an example of one woman who did this and then from that got a, a good job and then recognized that that wasn't enough and moved on to uh, complete her bachelor's work at the University of London and got credit for the Google IT certificate at the university. So those are no. the kinds of stories that really make us feel that things are worthwhile. I've got another example, this one's from the US, of a man who did this certificate, got a job, and now has bought his first house. So it really makes a difference for lots and lots of folks. Oh, wonderful. Well, Betty, thank you so much for uh, talking to us about your, your online learning at Coursera, of course, and um, many, many other online organizations out there that are giving skills to people that they didn't have before, didn't even think they could ever be in, exposed to before. And now all of a sudden we're, yeah. we're seeing that. Betty Vandenbosch, Chief Content Officer at Coursera. Um, thank you for your time. I assume if people want more information, they can just jump on your website and check out your Absolutely. courses there. Coursera.org. Yeah. Great. Thanks so much, Betty. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.